Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Us. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, my friends? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Thank you so much for joining us for Marriage Advice and Real Talk. If you are just joining us right now, go check out the over 500 episodes and over 5 million downloads of this type of content to help you out, to give you a growth mindset, to heal, and to move forward and meet some of your marriage goals. So we are glad that you have joined us today. Absolutely. So today we are continuing our February theme of the do's and don'ts, the do this, don't do that business. And today we're talking about the five do's and don'ts of conflict resolution in marriage. And again, I wanted to create this series because sometimes we hear the things that you should do, but we don't hear the things that you should not do mm. partnered with it. And they are both equally important. Do you yeah, have anything I think, you want to say I think a lot start? of people know like what not to do, but sometimes it's good to hear it explicitly. Like, Oh yeah. Oh, because sometimes it highlights something that we might not be aware of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hey, mm -hmm. don't do this one thing that you're family of origin, but you're so used to it, but it's actually hurting your wife's feelings. Yeah. Just don't do that. Okay? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, I had to turn that heater off. It was bugging me. I can't think. So I know this is like the do and don't series, but I cannot think of anything else when you say do and don't other than like, what is it? The line kung, do, do, no. What it's is it? from don't. the Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. And he says, do, don't do, noodle, don't noodle. <laughs> <laughs> it is so, great. So this is the, 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 the it's uh, when Poe is worried about his, what he should right. do or something. <laughs> Episode two of noodle or don't noodle. So, all right. Um, so again, it's the five do's and don'ts of conflict, conflict resolution in marriage. And this is also pulled directly from our work with coaching clients. We work with couples directly and this is something that we see often. So the number one thing in the, the do list, the first, first thing to do mm -hmm. when you're talking about conflict resolution is to actively listen to the other person's viewpoint to understand their perspective. Mm. Like full stop. You're actively listening. So let's break this down a little bit. What does actively yeah. listening mean? So actively listening can be verbal cues, of course, like, mm -hmm. oh, really? Tell me more. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel about that? I think I'm following you. Two nonverbal cues, which is if you're watching on YouTubes right now, I'm just, you know, nodding. head nodding, going, hmm, you know, making a contemplative mm -hmm. face, stuff like that. So that is some, those are some examples mm -hmm. of actively listening. And, and I'm going to use this. So actively listening is the way that you would treat someone that you really re re either respected or cared a lot about. You cared what they think about you. So uh, let's listen a few people like if you were if if your idol was like Jocko Willink and he was talking to you you wouldn't just be like hmm, mm -hmm. whatever you'd be like yeah oh yeah me too and that's so great like you'd have these you'd little be excited you'd be curious so again if you're watching <clears throat> okay right now you're talking to me, but mm -hmm. my phone is in front of my face. Mm -hmm. Is this active on my part? No. And when, and when you do that, I cannot listen. You, I actually tell you, like, I need you to put that away. You can't, I can't think. Right. Like, so that's, I can't focus when his phone is out. So that would be passively listening. Mm -hmm. So put your phone down, actively mm -hmm. listen. <laughs> what? Uh, it, it's, it's, um, here's maybe something that we, we could just quickly anecdotally talk about. We shouldn't have to be talking to somebody famous or like super important right. or a boss. Yes. Your wife or your husband should be the first person. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've been guilty of this and that's not good, but we want to bring awareness to it, not only in our own relationship, mm -hmm. but to you guys too. The number one person you should have direct loyalty to, direct support to and from is the person you're married to. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, it's actively listen to the other person's viewpoint to understand their perspective. So again, we kind of broke it into two pieces, but you're actively listening to their viewpoint. What mm -hmm. do you, why you touch me for what? Oh, sorry. I tried to touch you with that. That means you finish your sentence and then I have something to say. Before oh, you go absolutely to the next thing. not. So uh, <laughs> you're trying to actively listen to that person's viewpoint and to understand their perspective. So it's not like I'm listening to Seth to just like stab him back or mm -hmm. to be like, well, this is just what I think. You're trying to listen on purpose to understand what they think, how they see the situation. Mm -hmm. And again, the active part about it is so important. Active is, I, I think of Pilates. Right. When you're active, like you're using your muscles, you're using, you're engaged. You're, you're engaged, yes. But when you're not, things don't work right. Even you're just Pilates. sitting there, blah, right? So, but one of the key words in this, to understand their perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm holding <laughs> yeah. up my giant water bottle right now. You, if you had not seen this before, you don't know that there's a black and white American mm -hmm. flag on this side, yes. right? You have one perspective. Mm -hmm. You have 50% perspective, right? But I can be talking to you through the lens of this perspective. Well, yeah, on this side, mm -hmm. it's an American flag. And you can be like, what are you talking about? No, there's not. Yeah. And I would just turn it around, right? So 
that would make you feel silly if I was just like, uh, hello, yes, there is. You'd be like, oh, wait, I wasn't listening. But we also do that in conversations with our spouses mm-hmm. all the time. Look at it and try to understand it from their perspective, even though you may not see it. Yes, there are two sides of everything. Exact. Um, so the number two point is to maintain open and honest communication throughout the discussion. Again, this is to, for good conflict resolution, you need to have open and honest communication throughout the discussion. Mm. Um, I think the most important part about that is that if we, again, we've said this in past episodes, but if you don't share, I can't care. Like if you don't give me the communication of Mm -hmm. things that I'm supposed to be focused on or things that I don't know about you, blah, 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 I can't fix it. I can't focus on it. So maintaining open and honest communication throughout the discussion, regardless of what it is about, is going to help you solve the problem because if one of you is mute about it, Mm -hmm. they don't say the things. I mean, we've seen this with clients a thousand times. We've Mm -hmm. seen people try to like, well, I'm just not going to say something because that's the nicer thing to do. It is not nicer to deny your partner the information that they need to be able to make a change or adjust or even just to like love you back, Mm -hmm. right? You said something... uh I don't know if it was early, maybe a couple of years ago in our marriage. And you said something that when I don't communicate to you, I am essentially robbing you of the opportunity to understand, to do something nice, mm-hmm. to comfort me, to call me out on something. Mm-hmm. It, it is your, if, if we don't share, especially with your spouse, right? Again, that's supposed to be the number one relationship you have. If you don't share something with your spouse, you are robbing them of the opportunity to help you with Mm -hmm. probably something that they may be better at. Right. Right. And we've had this conversation and you know, I'm getting real honest here. You have helped me with that a lot. And I have pushed back a lot and resisted that to my, to everybody's detriment. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to rob you of the opportunity of a gift that you could have that you do have to bring to our marriage, to serve our family Mm -hmm. and likewise. Right. Yes. Your silence is not golden in this particular oh, situation. It is not helpful for you to be It's silent. not golden. It's rust. It's rust. It's, it's rusty. Tarnished. Right? <laughs> and so one, one other thing I was going to say about that is what Jordan Peterson says, like conflict avoided is what? Conflict multiplied. Conflict multiplied. So if we don't bring honest communication, then you're just going to possibly harbor resentment, mm-hmm. harbor fear, harbor anxiety, and it will bring upon you mm-hmm. and your marriage more conflict later. Yeah, it's just like, uh, it makes me think of um, a car. So I currently have one of my dream cars that I purchased. It's a 2005 Scion XB. It's the toaster looking car. It's a scooter, man. It I love that car. It is the best. The clutch on that thing, it's a stick shift. And it is the best clutch I've ever driven of any car. And it's an, but it's a 2005, right? That is a, almost a 25 or 20 year old car, right? It, it ain't no spring yeah. chicken. It's 18. And so Imagine that I took it to the a maintenance like repair dude and I said, oh, I don't like I just don't want to tell him like this thing doesn't work and that thing doesn't work because I don't want to bother him with it. And mm-hmm. maybe he'll think I'm weird if I tell him. So I will only tell him that the maintenance light is on. I'm not right. going to tell him the sound that it makes when I go 70 on uh, eight. You, you would be their best customer because they would go, yep, I see this one coming. Right, and yeah. then they would run, you know, oh, you, you need a new paint job. <laughs> a new paint job. <laughs> kind of do but uh but so it's think of it like that in order for you to have the conflict resolution you want and the marriage that you want with the maintenance that is required you have to be able to communicate um openly and honestly about the things that are bothering you and about the things that you want to have worked on and changed oh can i go to number three i know but the the so what you're saying literally is you have to diagnose the problem Mm -hmm. right i diagnose people with mental health disorders every single day. Don't talk about your mom like that. <laughs> I was talking about your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Don. <laughs> so ask a battery of questions, go through an assessment and say, from research, blah, 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 experience, I think it's this. Yeah. Just like when you go to AutoZone, you hook your little machine up to you the You get thing, into the zone. You, the, the zone. And it tells you what um, uh, OBD code I don't know what OBD stands for, but it's in the machine. And then you go, oh, I need this part. Mm-hmm. So if you can't diagnose the problem, if you're not willing to talk about and identify the problem, then you're going to live in a state of just kind of like, I don't know, I might be sick, I might not be. I feel kind of crappy, but I feel good today. Mm-hmm. Well, it might come back, but I don't know. It's just the same old thing over and over and over, right? So not diagnosing the problem 
is just not a good way. Right. And you to, can't do that without proper communication throughout the entirety of all of the conflict. So number three is seek a solution that acknowledges and respects both parties' needs and concerns. So again, this sounds like, hmm. well, duh, like that's what you're trying to do in conflict resolution. But I genuinely think most people are taught to win in conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. I think, especially if you saw this growing up, if you saw your parents where one was really dominant and the other one was really passive or one just like, oh, well, everything, we just do everything dad's way or we mm -hmm. do everything mom's way or everything grandma's way or whatever. You didn't see conflict resolution, the sort of volley. I think of it like um, playing volleyball, although this is not, or like ping pong or something. This mm -hmm. is not how it works, but it's this idea of like, pass it over to them. Then they pass it back and they pass it over again. And then eventually you'll get to a point where it's like the paddles get closer and closer and closer until you find a solution. That <laughs> I know <laughs> that's literally what I imagine when it's like, <laughs> like some hilarious game. Um, but that's the goal for conflict resolution is we're trying to seek a solution that acknowledges how you feel about it. It respects how you feel about it and it addresses our concerns. Right? Think about think about this like that little brrr, mm -hmm. like getting the ping pong ball closer and closer. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You are eliminating the distance between mm -hmm. each of you, right? right? Which is ideally you that's then you can come together and be like, Oh, we solved it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So by volleying back and I'm talking and I'm listening to my own words, taking my own advice right now, by going back and forth talking about a solution actually it's your advice i'm thinking about it <laughs> going back and forth going back and forth closer 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 oh okay it's kind of like you know when we do projects together mm -hmm. and the the whatever we're building needs a level mm -hmm. right so if you have a something super long you're not just going to put the level on it in one spot correct <laughs> yeah what that's a very funny thought it's what? level here <laughs> it's 30 feet long but it's level here right your Something board might be worth really funny. all kinds of stuff right you can tell we've dealt with a bunch of out of square walls but you don't put the level or the square yeah just on one spot mm -hmm. you go okay it's level here hold it there go down 15 mm -hmm. feet check it there yeah oh and then you go okay it's plumb here plumb and then you keep on coming coming together mm -hmm. until the whole thing is level. Right. There's no difference in what you were saying. Number four, number three, seek a solution that acknowledges my eyes just and respects weird. both parties' <laughs> needs and concerns. Right. So you're coming closer to understanding a compromise and you don't have to, and real talk, I grew up thinking, oh, we have to be exactly on the same thing. Mm -hmm. We have to be on the same plane. Mm -hmm. It has to, and not an airplane, like the whole plane <laughs> yes. playing field. It has to be level. We have to go one plus one equals two and nothing more, not dot, 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 3.14. It has to be this or else something's askew. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why the hell that is why I grew up or whatnot, but I've always thought that. And maybe listeners are thinking that too. You do not have to be exactly on the same You don't need plane. to be in complete agreement about it. And and there are points in our marriage where we actually aren't ever going to be in complete agreement about certain things. Obviously not huge things, but that's a really good point because we've had clients um, where the wife will say, like, if I don't 100% agree with every single thing that my partner says to me, I will just be punished with like a bad attitude or whatever. And that's been a very common theme uh, in people who had homes like that. Mm -hmm. um, where basically, I don't know, I could say a lot more about it, but you touching your phone made my brain stop working. Um, number four, <laughs> stay calm and composed, managing emotions effectively to keep the conversation constructive. Hmm. This is one of the most, um, I love to tell people like you can go through any situation and still have a positive mindset. You can have any experience and still be kind. Um, you could get, you know, I think of when I cut my hand open with a chainsaw, that's it's still one of my favorite stories ever. Because I got to see my own bone mm. with my own eyes, which is a secret wish I always had. in the bone had. club. <laughs> I'm in the bone zone. Hashtag blurry creatures. <laughs> That's a blurry creatures reference. If you know about the bone zone, you're in. I know one listener who absolutely will know that. <laughs> I love you, Stephen and Atisha. <laughs> Two of them, at least. Two of them, okay. And probably Robin. Um, anyway, uh. not Paul Vetter. But so uh, you can... I. Cut my hand open with a chainsaw. Literally, my children were right there. Seth was right there. I'm looking at my bone. My hand is bleeding. And I was, I literally was like, oh, this is my first test. Mm. I can control, I can handle this like perfectly. And I did. It sounds crazy. I didn't cry, didn't scream, didn't faint, didn't whatever. I almost fainted because I like my, remember when I got into the kitchen and I sat on the yeah. floor and I was like, oh man, I really might pass out. That's just kind of a shock response. Yeah, it was like That's your, not, what yeah. my body did. Mm. 
I didn't lay down at the doctor's office when I went in. I watched them stitch, stitch my hand up. I actually kind of really like that stuff anyway. But oh. I... What? That would just. I used to watch the Surgery Channel when I was. I did a kid. too, but after kids, I can't. Any of that stuff just. Oh, that's kills funny. Me. But yeah. anyway, all of that to say that I decided after listening to years of Wayne Dyer and you know who's that other guy, the one that sounds Sad like Guru. King Julian. Well, it's Guru, but the one that sounds like King Julian from um, Deepak Chopra. He oh. sounds exactly like King Julian from the from Madagascar. Madagascar. <laughs> um, like those types of teachers mm -hmm. and realizing like, oh, you can, you can like navigate literally anything, anything, uh, with, you're, you're making me think of, um, oh, the Holocaust guy yes. vibes, uh, Victor Vic Frankl, Victor Frankl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like those kind of vibes. man's search for meaning. Yes. That is a great book. Mm -hmm. So stay calm and composed, managing emotions effectively to keep the conversation constructive. So again, if you want conflict resolution to go well you can't lose your crap mm. you can't yell you can't scream you can't cry you can't run you can't shut down now i know a lot of you think you can't you have to do those things you go what what do you mean i can't right i've dealt with this a thousand times with clients and it, it it's kind of fun in our coaching sessions my goal is to prove them wrong by making them <laughs> stay like tolerate frustration with me and I push them to the point of them where they want to shut down. They want to yell. They want to cry. They want to run away. And I make them stay there and stay there you're, and stay you're, there. You're uh, what we call um, an, an exposure therapist. That's right. Like you just throw them in. Right. Right. It's oh, effective. you're scared of snakes. Here's a million snakes. <laughs> Got you, sucker. <laughs> what do you think now? Are you going to cry? Huh? <laughs> um, however, from, and I, and I really appreciate that work. And I, I've seen that like work a thousand times with our clients. What you, what you just said. From a clinical point of view, like we've talked about flooding and flip mm -hmm. your lid, you go to lizard brain, right? And then I'm thinking about the pursuer distancer dynamic and there, and this is the research of John Gottman, like there is a point when you are flooded yes. where your brain just, it mm -hmm. cuts off. You're like, okay, somebody's going to get it or I have to leave right. kind of thing. That's and that's different. a real thing. Yeah, that's a different. We, we have both been flooded. I think me more than you, but we have both been flooded. We've had other clients and I'm sure that you, yes, if you're a human, you have been flooded. You with the shoulders, you have been flooded. I hope we don't have a listener that doesn't have shoulders that hears that every time that you say that and is like, oh, <laughs> they get flooded. <laughs> okay, keep on. <laughs> oh boy, I just thought of making other jokes. <laughs> anyway, um, so I want to like really identify that and give credence to it because it's a real thing. Now, if you find yourself getting flooded all the time and just storming out and then your partner follows you and then you are in the pursuer distancer dynamic, you have to stop doing that. You have to say, first of all, you have to do some own internal work and go, I'm literally, I'm, I'm flooded, but you can't go, I'm flooded. See, you flooded me, Ugh. right? You can't blame it. You, <laughs> you have, made me yell at you. Right. You have to identify it in yourself and go, dude, I'm feeling bonkers mm -hmm. right now because sometimes that is how it feels. It feels like you're losing your mind and you're like, I don't know what to do, but whatever this is happening right now, it has to stop. Now that takes practice, just like exercise. If you haven't worked out in six months and you go to the gym and try to max out on bench press, first of all, you could really hurt yourself. Mm. Second of all, you'll probably not do it and hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And third of all, tomorrow morning, you are going to be like lead getting out of bed because you jumped into it too quick, yeah. right? So don't expect yourself, if you've been flooded for three years, had the same argument over and over, you can't just go, ah, oh, identify it, and then boop, poof. Yeah. It, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You have to think about it. You have to pay attention to your body. Where do you feel the floodedness? For guys, oftentimes it's clenched hands, mm -hmm. like making a fist, tightness in the chest. For women, similar things. Maybe you feel it in your abdomen more. Sometimes for me, I Never feel, like I feel it in my throat mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like I feel a... Um a ru like the what's it, like pins like and needles like a rush like a rush of heat mm. and that's when i know and so I, you bring up two really good points um I always do. so flooded remind me of flooded yes. but then the the one so uh how you think when you're flooded and then this the second one i'm going to say first <laughs> is uh <laughs> is uh when you're so a lot of times people don't know what the sensation of being flooded feels like on its onset. They only know the after effect of like, oh my gosh, I actually wasn't thinking clearly. Mm -hmm. And they, they like look at it 
um, retrospectively. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why, why did I say that? Or why did I punch the wall? Like I didn't, Oh, they, they think about it retrospectively and can't do anything about it. But one of the most amazing things that I learned, I can't remember. I think it was Dr. Tina Shermer Sellers or somebody Mm -hmm. was talking about this idea of like bodily, like understanding how your body, like, physiologically responds to when you're about to flood sometimes your body does it way before your brain is aware of it right so understanding your particular type of flooding is far more important than you might realize so for say what it is for you again what kind of things happen to you when you get flooded before you even realize you're flooded your body does what uh usually i'm clenching my jaw Mm -hmm. and I i know that your mouth gets dry you start like you start to sound like someone giving a ted talk our kids would kill you right now for that <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> They're always like, Dad, you're chewing so loud. I'm like, Sorry, I'm Dude. alive. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm is grateful. it? Right. What is it that happens to you? Uh, I, the tightness in my chest and just an overall anxiety feeling. Mm-hmm. It's but it's just cortisol, and that it's and if I can identify it, if I'm coming home, pulling. But just the, answer my question. How does it feel? I just want to know how it feels. Crusty and gross. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> For me, like I said, like I get this rush of heat almost like um, if when? you're af- afraid almost, huh? When? Like if you, if we're in a conversation that is turning into an argument and like if you say something that just pushes me over the edge, I feel it first and it comes from like my belly button up. Like it's like a flood that just goes up. And hmm. then I know, oh, I'm getting flooded. I don't feel that sensation anymore and just go, oh, yeah, which is what most people do because that's what flooding does to you. Right. It's fight or flight. It's like that's what happens if someone's in a jungle and uh, they hear a tiger. They go, Hah! right? It's like all systems go to a thousand. Can I tell you a really hilarious story? Sure. And I don't think I've ever said this on the podcast before, um, but it, it is a it is a true one of the most fight. Well, I've had a couple, but it's a fight or flight moment. So. Okay, so I was in the band. The band's name is Emery, right? They're on tour again. I hope they come to Seattle because I'm going to take it up. But anyway, we were living at the keyboardist's house with his parents, and I had gone on a date one night and was driving back to Maple Valley, and it was like 2 in the morning. And this is like a wooded area. Like it was dark, a wooded area dark. down on Maxwell Road, yeah. right? Right. And uh, so you know the story, but I haven't told yeah. it. So it's like 2 in the morning, and I hadn't been out here long, so I don't know the land exactly, you know? <laughs> and you don't know what's in the woods. And I don't know what's in the woods. So my buddies, the dudes and the bandmates, we're gonna like, we're gonna get him. We're gonna prank him so good. And so I turn into the driveway and it's a long driveway, right? And there's a car parked like right in the driveway. So I'm like, dang it, it's two in the morning. We didn't even have I didn't have a cell phone yeah. back then, right? Oh, yeah. Two in the morning. Oh, what am I gonna do? Right. So parked my car just in the grass in the yard and like was walking and i promise you it was foggy it was dark no flashlight it's a pacific northwest kind of dark but i had my pants on so what else did i have your knife my pocket knife right so i was like all right i'm not messing around so i opened up my knife and was just walking around walking around and toby i I heard some (laughs) rustling and i was like i got in like like a fight stance, yeah. right? I was like, oh, it's, go, it's going down. It's happening, right? <laughs> so I got the knife, and he come running out, and I went, I'll stab you, dude. <laughs> I said, I'll stab you, dude. Yeah, because you didn't know who he was. I didn't yeah. know what it was except a person going, <laughs> running toward me, and I just made this guttural, just like, I mean, I was a caveman. I was a caveman, just like, <laughs> and I'll stab you, dude. <laughs> it's like the happiest moment of your life. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was the worst, scariest. Of course, they lost their mind. They were like, oh, I can't believe. <laughs> so that is a real response yes. of true fight or flight, like a tiger chasing yes. you in the like woods. It actually changes you. Fight oh, or changed, flight. It changed everything. Changes you. It's that same feeling. One time I thought Hattie was lost. I thought someone took <laughs> yeah. her out of our yard. Mm. And you have never experienced fight or flight. I jumped. I literally hopped a five foot fence in a single leap. Wow. Literally one arm on jumped the fence between ours and Camille's house in the back in one leap. Didn't really? think about it. Didn't feel anything. Didn't cl- didn't didn't scramble. I was just like you were just Whoa. pure. Yeah, I was like, "Where's going. my kid?" Uh, so that is what fight or wow. flight and being flooded does to you. So why it's important to know what your like earliest fight or flight response in your body is is because the second part I was going to say mm-hmm. is that it changes how you think when you are in fight or flight mode. You cannot learn 
You cannot learn. So mm. when when couples fight and they're all uh, with, they're flooded and they're yelling and they're they're like all hot, you know, wah, they actually can't learn. So there's no mm-hmm. point in explaining to your partner anything because yeah, they're not going to hear it. It doesn't matter what you say. I love pizza right. and fried chicken. Yeah, I will not remember it. Yeah. At all. And we're designed that way. Like our bodies are designed to shut the learning out and all we're trying to do is survive. So mm. be aware, uh, take a t- take some time today and talk about what and think about like what are your actual physical triggers when you start to get flooded? Is your jaw clenched? Do you wring your hands? Do you and your spouse actually might know better than you because mm-hmm. they probably see it. So talk about it. And then let that be your cue. If you start feeling flooded before you realize mentally that you're flooded, walk away, tell them, tell your partner like, whoa, I just felt the thing. I'm going to go somewhere else for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is the actual number of minutes that it kind of takes you to get back down and then revisit it. So then we're going to go to number five, which is use I statements to express your feelings and needs without blaming the other person. Mm. That is the um, sort of the premise of the uh, The clearing clearing structure. structure. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit confusing how it works because I statements, I remember in our very first like season of the show, Matt and I were like, I think you're dumb. (laughs) I think you suck at this thing. And we're like, no, that's not how it works. (laughs) It's not, that's not an I statement. Well, Um, it is, but that's not helpful. It's not what we meant. (laughs) So like if you're in a conflict, you wouldn't want to say things like, well, you always cause problems because you're blah, blah, blah. And you're never on time. And you think that and you're whatever. That's not going to help the conflict. You're just throwing blame and uh judgment onto someone and the only thing that people can do when you throw something at them is defend themselves right right i imagine our hattie is currently in a phase of like throwing things at you and kind of thinks it's funny like and punching you in the yeah punch it she's 11 <laughs> she's not a toddler but she thinks it's going to be funny right and she just doesn't quite know yet that it can you could get hurt right and so what ends up happening is you kind of like you're like on the defense all the time mm-hmm. so you don't want to get smacked in the eye with a right. watermelon slice or whatever um but all of that to say, so you cannot use, I call them you statements actually with our clients. Mm-hmm. I don't say you statements. Don't say, well, you, I know you know mm-hmm. that you're doing this. You know, I don't like that. Or you did that on purpose. So it'd be like this. If I have a goal, who is responsible for that goal? Jesus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You. Well, true. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't know that that's true at all, but well, keep, keep to, on. To if you degree. have a goal, what? If I have a goal, who is responsible? You. I am responsible for it. I cannot say... I didn't go to grad school because you made me mad and I couldn't concentrate and I didn't even apply. (laughs) You can't say that. I didn't go to grad school because I got lazy Mm -hmm. and lost sight of my dreams or who knows what, right? So one statement is true. One statement is false. The true statement puts ownership on me, Mm -hmm. which then if I have ownership of something, then I can do take active steps to change it Mm -hmm. to what I want to do, Right. right? I'm not a victim. I'm empowered. Mm-hmm. I control my and, destiny, yeah. right? So are you going to... So, well, okay. I statements are more like this. I felt sad when you didn't call on time. Mm-hmm. Or I felt um, like I felt disrespected when you said I was fat at the at the Great Wolf Lodge <laughs> in my swimsuit. I don't you know. You know, we're here at the Great Wolf Lodge and <laughs> this lighting at the Great Wolf Lodge makes me realize you're fat. <laughs> Cellulite much? <laughs> so uh, anyway, where can someone get the clearing structure? Oh, funny you should ask. <laughs> um, it happens to be in the Power Couple Planner, which is the planner that we created for couples based on our coaching experience. And in the back, there is clearing structure forms to fill out so that you can actually walk through this um, in conflict resolution. I, that And this can apply to your relationship with your kids too. Mm-hmm. The clearing structure is an amazing tool. I'm going to just quickly read you the six questions. So the first question is just as when you, and then there's bl- blank lines to fill in. So when and you- This is you talking to me yep. about an issue and i would fill this out like let's say i had a problem so i could say okay hey seth when you so don't true. when you don't call me um and you show up 45 minutes late to our date and then the next step is number two i feel and it might be disrespected unloved um like you don't really care about me anxious anxious mm-hmm. and then the third part is what i make up about this is like you don't actually care about our marriage or you don't want to be my husband or you think I'm stupid, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to feel something. And usually we all make up something about what we feel. Number four, this is a little bit weird, but it's helpful. What that reminds me of is how my parents were like that. Or my my brothers made me feel stupid. Or a guy I dated was so mean to me. And it reminds me, it makes me feel bad just mm-hmm. like that. Number five, what I want from you is to be on time. To If you're going to be late, let me know way ahead of time. Or please just be on time. Uh, number six is what I want for myself is to 
be respected, Mm -hmm. uh, have someone I can trust, that kind of thing. Not feel anxious. Yes. And then at the bottom of the page, it actually gives you a little paragraph of how to bring this up with your partner. Um, It says, hey, sweetie, we don't need to talk about this right now, but I would like to come up with a time where we both feel calm and are able to lovingly and productively talk about this. I love you. Mm. Um, So again, the clearing structure is in the Power Couple Planner. You can go to anatomyofus.com to get that. Uh, It is an amazing tool full of so many resources that we created, again, to help our coaching clients primarily, and we use it all the time. It's got weekly dates and, and so much more go get your power couple planner today okay so now. <clears throat> again number five is use i statements to express your feelings and needs without blaming the other person okay now we are going to the don't noodle parts <laughs> we covered the do's which will help you out resolve conflict make you feel better about yourself and your relationship and we are going to the don'ts because sometimes we may be doing something that is not helpful but we've been doing it so long that we just don't realize yeah. it anymore right mm-hmm. so we want to point it out okay and shine a light on some things shine a light that's right okay Don't do this in your relationship. Do not resort to personal attacks or bring up past issues not relevant to the current conflict. You're not going to say more. You're just going to stop. Okay. Got it. Now I know it's my turn to speak. (laughs) So I think it's important. Again, it goes back to number one of the do list uh, to be... And that's not what I was going to say. No, number four. Sorry. Stay calm and composed and all of that stuff. Like... It's not going to help anything for you to have a, to do a personal attack. That's going to, I often think of a relationship like a bridge. It has these, um, like the support structure, it's called trusses, like the trusses of a bridge mm-hmm. need to be intact. And when you begin to do personal attacks within a marriage to the sort of undergirding support structure of that bridge of your marriage, you inevitably are going to tear it apart. Mm-hmm. It's going to fall. Uh, you cannot... People cannot suffer personal attacks and irrelevant, unkind things over and over and over and over and over again and then have a healthy marriage. You cannot do that. You can't take all the trusses out from under the bridge and and expect the bridge to be roadworthy. Yes. And some people just think, again, it's probably what you grew up with. You grew up with parents that did that. You saw parents that did that or whatever. But uh, you cannot have a healthy, sustainable relationship slash bridge Uh, If you are constantly doing personal attacks. And again, it's like that you put your partner in just defense mode, like arms come up like you're Mm -hmm. I'm I know that you're going to throw a punch at me. So I'm going to just be ready all the time. And then that you're not loving and trusting and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I've done that one a lot. And I'm sorry about that for sure. Thank you. Um, Personal attacks. And then also uh, do not bring up past issues not relevant to the current conflict and we have been guilty of this and other couples are guilty of this too have you ever been in an argument and gotten about 30 minutes down the road an hour down the road and you go what are we even arguing about mm-hmm. what did we start about mm-hmm. right That's i've gotten because, i've started writing it down did you really? know that i write down what our arguments about because of that exact thing that's a very helpful practice. and i actually had another practice that i wrote i haven't made it into a resource yet but i want to called what are we even arguing about mm-hmm. because oftentimes it's not the same thing right which makes them just cycle around and Sorry. oftentimes and this is our own personal experience sometimes melanie will bring up an issue or i'll bring up an issue and we start having conflict around that and then that is a stepping stone to the next thing that I have had on my mind but haven't brought up, which is connected to the next thing. And then we're talking about 20 years ago, literally. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's, that is, that, and it, so I'm realizing this. I mean, I knew this, but I'm just saying it out loud. That's like futile. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you don't, it's like, when you said futile, I thought of worms for some reason. This is worms. like what worms would do. It's futile. I don't know. Why. <laughs> it was funny. It popped into my brain. I'm I thought thinking I would of feudal, like uh, like a feudal lord. I don't even know what that is. Who knows what a feudal lord is? Oh shoot! I don't. It's something from. Remember, I was a, like British Zelda? history minor, so I'm like it's something to do with that stuff. <laughs> Surfs. A feudal surf. Surf and turf. No, uh, but anyway, um, that it. That is a, it, it's like spending $2 to get a dollar back. And then you keep on doing that. Keep on doing that. Mm-hmm. Keep on doing that. You're like, great. I'm down a hundred dollars when I like wanted to spend 50, but I just doubled my yeah. like tax bill every single mm-hmm. time. And you're getting further and further away. Like the ping pong analogy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, instead of getting closer, yeah. it's like you're yeah. hitting you're it, hitting it as far as you can. In the and then 10 <laughs> seconds later, it goes back to you and then you hit it. You say, you're yeah. getting farther and mm-hmm. farther from the point. So basically coming from two people with ADD we yeah, me mainly you have to stay on on track but if you're flooded 
when you haven't identified right. that and you keep on going, mm -hmm. then you're literally just going, that flood is going to take you farther and farther away. There's so many analogies in this yeah. podcast, right? So just stay on track. Okay. Now to number two, number don't two. interrupt the other person or <laughs> what? So number two is don't interrupt the other person or dismiss their feelings and opinions. I interrupted you on purpose for that. Obs. Um, mm -hmm. But this is something again, this is two different section, two different parts. Like don't interrupt someone. Can you tell that to Hattie? <laughs> Hattie, can you listen to this part of the show? Thanks. Hattie loves to interrupt. Thanks, babe. But uh, it's kind of <laughs> cute. So don't interrupt the other person or dismiss their feelings mm -hmm. or opinions, feelings and opinions. And again, when you have, when someone's, okay, pretend that I dismiss what you think or what you feel. Maybe you tell me my favorite color is magenta. And I'm like, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Ew, gross, magenta. Ugh. Right? Like imagine that that's what I did. You would immediately, number one, feel bad about the fact that magenta was your favorite color because someone like shamed you for it. Right. And then you'd be like, well, now I want to defend why magenta is my favorite color. It's pretty. It looks good on the rose and it's this and it's that. Like when you um, dismiss somebody's feelings and opinions, all you're doing is putting in their brain uh, like on autopilot, they want to defend everything, which again, isn't probably what you're the conflict you're even trying to solve mm -hmm. is probably not even about that and so it, it just like starts these side tangents that are not helpful it is not helpful well it goes back to what you should do you should try to understand uh mm -hmm. other people's viewpoints from their perspective and if i say hey there's an american flag on this side and you go no there's not right what are you talking about and i'm like well, well and the, the analogy so you're doing a thing from born rich bob you, proctor you just, you just interrupted born me. rich seminar because you're not explaining it in a way that i think is helpful enough okay if i hold up this water bottle and i say what's on this water bottle and from you the viewer's perspective they say nothing and mm -hmm. i go what you're wrong there's something on this water bottle and you're like it's black i don't see anything like no there's nothing on it and then he turns it around the flag was just facing him right, right on the book mm -hmm. so it's helpful i think to have that understanding of like if i hold it up and say what do you see and you say nothing and they go no you're wrong right right that makes sense mm -hmm. now what do we say go to number three <laughs> <laughs> Number three, don't let emotions like anger or frustration take over the conversation. This goes back to flooding mm -hmm. and you have to be able to identify what you are feeling in your body. You know, did you have a good day or was it stressful at work? Mm -hmm. Have the kids been bugging? I've been noticing this like at night we have a, we got a piano, a real piano, like in, in our living room now mm -hmm. and our kids play it all the time. We also have a cello and a guitar in the same room. So it's like something is going on mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes I have noticed this. Nothing is wrong. Like kids are just playing, but it's like trying to have a conversation when you're in a New York subway tunnel <laughs> yeah. with two, you know, A trains going by. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, and then a drummer playing the bottom side of a right. So <laughs> all all yeah. of that is is it's fine. It's fine, right? But if you're trying to work against that, mm -hmm. you're going to build yourself up and get frustrated and go ah, go to bed, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever. And it's just like this this kind of grading thing. So if you can't identify that, then you might run into problems later. So that I just wanted to point that out because that happens often. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, I'm, I can't get upset that I want to talk to my wife. Like I see all this other stuff going on right now is not the time. Mm -hmm. It's just not the time. Mm -hmm. It's not because she's like preoccupied or this or that, or like being weird. It's like, oh, it's going to be hard to talk anyway. No right. one could concentrate in the first place. So you have to, um, identify your emotions like anger or frustration or just like constant kid time and go, Oh, it's not the time. Don't let that overtake the conversation. And if mm -hmm. you do take a pause, like you said, clinically uh, 20 minutes mm -hmm. is that, or more, you know, if you have to take more, sure. But when you do that, tell your partner like, Hey, I have to take a break. Mm -hmm. I love you. I'll, I'm coming back, but I need to yeah. take a chill pill right now. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I think of another side of that too, is that if you let emotions take over and they get the steering wheel for a bit, you will start to fight about that. So like, let's say you come up to me and you're upset about, um, like the kitchen is a mess and you're like, why is the kitchen all, always a mess? Which Seth doesn't yell at me by the way. But so let's say you did. And then I'd be like, why are you yelling at me? So now all of a sudden it went from the kitchen is a mess to you're yelling at me. Mm. I'm not yelling at you. And then now it's okay. Now we're fighting about yelling, not right. the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You always yell at me. Now we're fighting about always situations, right? Just so like it, your dad. Yeah, just or like your dad. Whatever. So it turns right. into this like 
just this crazy ladder, uh, like a salmon ladder, of like things that aren't related to what was the initial problem. Who knows? The kitchen being messy, Mm -hmm. right? So if you let your emotions take over, they will sort of, they'll just like diarrhea everything. And then you'll be like, what were we even talking about? (laughs) I don't know. No, people remember it. Um, Number four of the don't list is don't jump to conclusions or make assumptions without fully understanding the other person's perspective. Mm. Um, Maybe it would, I don't know. I feel like I could reword that and make it a little bit more clear. But jumping No, to- I like that. So like be curious and be open. Mm-hmm. Be open to there may be something that you aren't seeing yeah. in this conversation. Mm-hmm. Hey, Melanie, you hurt my feelings because of X, Y, Z. Now, if I do a poor job of explaining that, mm-hmm. that still should not give the other person or you liberty to go make the conclusion of, well, that's stupid. Right. Why? Mm -hmm. Right. So I have to explain more. Right. So don't jump to, so in grad school, I've told you about this before. We had this principle. It's called ORCA, openness, curiosity, respect, accountability. And (laughs) that's okra. What you just spelled. Openness, responsibility. ORCA. You said ORCA and then spelled okra. Okra has a K. I I know, but with a C. (laughs) Curiosity with a K. Cody with a K. Openness, curiosity, respect, accountability. Yeah. So, but the, the, the thing in there is curiosity. Mm -hmm. Like be curious, Mm -hmm. ask a million questions. And it's not like you're going to intuit like, Hey, that's a black water bottle. Is there an American flag? And no, no one would think of that (laughs) if you're not thinking about that, but you can go, Hey, there might be something that I'm not seeing in this equation. Yes. And I'm not going to jump to assumptions. I'm not going to come to some foregone conclusion that is so black and white that I have just dug my heels in. Mm -hmm. Just be open, be curious about it. And I say this with clients all the time that after being married for nearly 20 years, I stopped pretending that I could, that I actually understood Seth. And I don't mean that in a weird way. When I say that to clients, they almost always laugh, but I mean, it it is weird at first, but with, if you're curious, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense. And it's, I think it's a more loving way to treat someone, anybody that you don't actually know. I don't know what he would pick for everything. I don't know. Like I can kind of guess at some of the things just given the length of time we've been together, but I don't know how he's actually feeling. And if I think I know, I don't treat him with the autonomy he deserves if that makes sense. So I s- intentionally have started saying, I don't know what it is that he wants or cares about or whatever. Like I know some of them, but I don't know all of them. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not even going to pretend that I know. I'm going to start from a place of curiosity first. Right. Does that make sense? Can you give an example? Um, like if, if uh, some option to go do something comes up, like that, I think like old me would be like, oh, Seth wouldn't like that. He, he, I don't know. I'm thinking of the botanical gardens that your grandma wouldn't let us go visit in Canada <laughs> or London. Gee, Shirley. Um, but she, like, you got to think about gardens in okay, two countries. Apparently I know. But so like I, you know, part of me would be like, oh, I really want to go to this and I want Seth to go, but he won't like it. And he, he'll think it's expensive and maybe he'll say it's dumb. So I just won't even ask him. And, and now the sort of newer version of me would be like, oh, just ask. It's okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And then you might be like, oh, that's awesome. I've always wanted right. to go and see the structure of the building or sort of whatever. like when we went camping this year. Yes. It's like, hey, yes. You had jumped to a conclusion. To, yeah. yeah. Like, I think you jumped to a conclusion. Melanie doesn't like to camp. And we went and you hated it and you're never going again. So <laughs> no, no you, I'm just kidding. Okay, not, I feel like there was a message there that would have been helpful. Can you restart that one? Yes, I am just kidding about that. But for years, I had gone camping and taken the kids camping, and I just didn't assume. No, no I you assumed made the assumption. that just Melanie wouldn't like it. Mm-hmm. And just last year, after a long time, I'm like, hey, would, no, you, no, no, would no. you like to go with no, us? No, that is not how it happened. No? But you said, Seth would say, well, mom doesn't like to do that. Mom's not going this year. And I'm like, no one has invited me. Ah. No one has invited me camping Mm -hmm. for 20 years. I've not been invited because I didn't go like one time, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's, again, it's an assumption. Let's be curious. It was a great time. Number five, apparently I wrote four twice. Um, Don't avoid or ignore the conflict as this can lead to unresolved issues and resentment in Mm -hmm. the future, right? So don't avoid whatever the problem is. That doesn't mean you have to talk about the problem or approach it like a crazy person. You don't need to scream and fight. Obviously that's all the things that we've been talking about, but one of the worst things you can do is avoid it. Like that's why the doctor makes you go to your annual checkup when nothing is wrong. That's why Mm -hmm. you go to the dentist when nothing is wrong. No cavities, no molar incisors. I don't know what the other thing would be. Gum gingivitis. You go on as a maintenance mechanism and you don't avoid it, right? Because if you avoid it, you can make it a whole lot worse. So do not avoid conflict. Again, it's like the little 
the faster you can pull a weed out, the smaller it is, the, mm-hmm. the sooner you can get to a cavity. You're not having to have a root canal or what I, I'm assuming those two things are connected. I have no idea. I think so. Does that make sense? It makes, I mean, it, again, it goes back to one of the points that we had already talked about before. Um, man, it's just like anything, mm-hmm. anything, anything, anything. If you have a root, a leaky roof, mm-hmm. oh, it's just a tiny drip. For now. <laughs> For now. But then five years later, oh, great. There's mold in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Now we have to do all this remediation mm-hmm. and take out the things and blah, 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 which could have been, hey, just go put a tiny little dab of caulk. Mm-hmm. Go on the go on the roof, go on the thing, tiny little dab of caulk right now. Was that stuff called the spray stuff? No. <laughs> Flex seal. Flex seal. <laughs> Get some flex seal up there. Just put some flex seal on it, right? And just small things. So in in that last point, I would encourage you got you listeners and us, if there's small what does Proverbs say? Catch for us the little foxes, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, the little foxes multiply and, destroy and like ruin the, vine. the whole vine and the whole garden, right? So what what is it? Uh a pinch of salt is worth a pound of cure. Uh, I don't know. A pinch of spit is worth a nickel. I don't know. I've, I just made it up. It sounded good in my brain. <laughs> a pinch of spit is worth a nickel. That's, that's like an old timey southern saying. My say. brother would say. I'd be like, what? <laughs> I know, yeah. Uh, but you, you, you understand what I'm saying. So, do you want to do a quick recap, or, or how these principles have helped us, and mm-hmm. how, when we haven't done them. They have not helped us. Mm-hmm. Just, just do it. Let's do a quick, a quick recap. Say okay. number one is actively listening to the other person's viewpoint to understand their perspective. Number two, maintain open and honest communication throughout the discussion. Number three, seek and seek a solution that acknowledges and respects both parties' needs and concerns. Okay, I'm going to read it in a different voice. Number four, stay calm and composed, managing emotions effectively to keep the conversation constructive. You didn't mm-hmm. like that. Number five, <laughs> use I statements to explain your feelings and needs without blaming the other person. <laughs> Gross. You sound like my. Micro dirty jobs. Number one, don't. I mean, this is a do don't list. Mm-hmm. Don't resort to personal attacks or bring up past issues not relevant to the current conflict. Don't interrupt the other person or dismiss their feelings or opinions. Don't let emotions like anger or frustration take over the conversation. Number four, don't <laughs> jump to conclusions, make assumptions without fully understanding the other person's perspective. You were Bob Proctor for a minute. And number five, don't avoid or ignore the conflict as this can lead to unresolved issues and resentment. And the last thing that I want to say as we wrap this up is that I hate the word conflict because it denotes uh, like that it's bad, right? Conflict conflict is war. Conflict is a fight. Conflict mm. is, is all these really negative connotations. And I, I wish that there was a better word that was more, I don't know, socially used that that didn't have that really strong association with pain, suffering, struggle, whatever, frustration. Because what you're saying, you know that conflict is necessary. It is ne- absolutely necessary. Conflict right. is, I mean, a really random story, but when you we breed dogs, we breed Australian shepherds and when our <laughs> When our bitch has puppies, that's what it's a female dog is called. You're, our kids think that's the funniest thing you're ever. You're a real breeder. Now. Yeah, when when the bitch has puppies, uh, they she has to rough them up or they die. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. So if like one of your puppies rolls away and just gets left somewhere and it's laying there, it will not live. It fails to thrive. It needs to have a little bit. Again, conflict feels like such a weird word there, but it needs to be pushed and moved and tension and, and to be like the, with a puppy, it needs to be licked and flung around. Like literally she like flings it around like a, she's cooking. It, it has to be, it has to be activated. Yes. Right. So, Ooh, this is good. Growth requires activation. When you do Pilates, you did it like two days ago and you came home and you're like, that's the hardest class, hardest. That's the hardest class I've yes. ever done. And I was like, why? And you said, yeah, we did all these new moves. Mm-hmm. It was hard. Mm -hmm. It was resistance. Mm -hmm. It was your muscles were in conflict with laying around whatever (laughs) results are are, are, are resistance. Yes. Right. When I go to the gym and do bench press, Mm -hmm. I put the weight on there for resistance. Yeah. But you don't call it conflict. I'm going to go fight the weights at the gym. (laughs) I'm going to go fight the Pilates bench. No, you don't. But that's a really great point. There isn't a word for what it is. Well, there might be. I don't know. But growth requires conflict growth requires resistance pushback because you can't discover who you are or what you're made of i'm preaching hallelujah you can't discover who you are or what you are made of or how strong you are if you are not tested 
and engaged in that and all of that engaged and present mm-hmm. and in the in the mud and in the thing like when we did tough mutter that was like the most alive ever mm-hmm. i i was basically had an iv adrenaline for mm-hmm. uh an hour i wish i lived on a tough mutter course i would just run through it all the time you just run. my favorite our property could be a, oh, I know a it. tough mutter track but that is that's where you want to be mm-hmm. right and again I, I wish that i could i wish that there was some word that had a really positive connotation associated with it for facing the um again the word challenges isn't even the right word it's like the difference sure there is in have. like latin or greek or somewhere weird we could find it <laughs> it's gonna be a really funny word that no one can pronounce uh, but i want to encourage you that conflict doesn't have to be bad conflict should never have to be yelling fighting crying feeling terrible it's that isn't real helpful conflict so you can do Mm. positive productive the same way that you lift weights and that causes you to be stronger approach conflict resolution with a new lens um and that that lens can help lift you guys to a new level in your marriage but not if you fall back into the old don'ts and all of that jazz but anyway we love you guys hopefully this has been helpful and go get the power couple planner and do all of the amazing things all right guys love you see you